Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at analysis of effect of source inductance on single phase full converter. So this is basically a continuation of our previous video where we saw the effect of source inductance on single phase full converter and we completely analyzed the waveforms as how we are getting and we also saw how the circuit operates. So in this video, we'll be focusing towards the derivation that is the analysis part of deriving the average output voltage expression just like the way we were doing for the other circuits. So this is a very important derivation and we also need to remember the formulas once we derive them as they are extremely important for solving numericals. Now how to derive the average output voltage just like the way we were doing it in the previous cases we know that the notation is V out average is equal to 1 by total time period that is in this case the total time period we are considering is pi that is it is starting from this point to this point if you consider this as one complete waveform so the total time period is nothing but pi integration of what is the lower limit if you carefully observe the output voltage we are getting only from this point to this point so the remaining portion is zero so we'll be considering only between this point and this point that is alpha plus mu to pi plus alpha so the lower limit is nothing but alpha plus mu to pi plus alpha we are not considering beyond that because the output voltage is anyways going to zero so this is nothing but vm sin omega t d omega t isn't it now simplifying this we can take vm outside vm by pi integration of sin is nothing but minus cos so minus cos omega t you have alpha to mu alpha plus mu to pi plus alpha now applying the lower and upper limits v out average is equal to vm by pi minus cos of pi plus alpha plus minus of minus will be plus that is the lower limits cos of alpha plus mu isn't it now we can write this as vm by pi minus cos of pi plus alpha can be written as cos of a plus b formula that is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b isn't it so we can write it as minus cos pi since minus is outside already over here cos alpha minus of minus will be plus because cos cos of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b minus of minus outside will be plus sin pi sin alpha plus you will be having this particular term as it is cos of alpha plus mu so this sin pi is nothing but zero so this term will be zero so you will be left out with minus cos pi co minus cos pi is nothing but minus of minus one cos pi is minus one so you'll be getting cos alpha so the final average output voltage expression is nothing but vm by pi cos alpha plus cos of alpha plus mu So this is the average output voltage expression with the presence of source inductance on a single phase full converter circuit. But if you carefully observe in this particular output voltage waveform, we don't have term LS associated, meaning to say LS is the source inductance, isn't it? So there are cases where they will give you the source inductance and ask you to find the average output voltage for the value. So in that case, you need to derive V out average in terms of LS. So how do we do that? So that is what we're going to do. So now let us consider for a full wave converter circuit or a full wave control rectifier we had seen V out DC is nothing but 2 Vm by pi cos alpha. This we have derived in the previous videos for a fully controlled rectifier isn't it? So we are taking that expression. So in the analysis part in the previous video I mentioned that the output voltage is going to zero compared to that of a fully controlled rectifier, isn't it? So the output voltage is reducing, meaning to say. So what is the reduction? 
the reduction can be found out by subtracting this actual V out average with a full converter and V out average with LS. So when you are subtracting this, you will know the quantity of the reduction. So this is nothing but 2 Vm by pi times cos alpha minus V out average. So this V out average is nothing but with full fully controlled rectifier that is this expression minus V out average over here is nothing but with LS that is nothing but we have just found out that expression Vm by pi cos alpha plus cos of alpha plus mu. This is V out reduced. Let us call this as expression number one. So please make a note of this and label it as expression number one. Now let us derive the average output voltage in terms of LS. So we are considering the circuit diagrams again and the waveform because as we derive there is a point where we need to understand what happens for understanding the lower and upper limits for the integration. So in general can we write Vs that is the source voltage when all the four thyristors are conducting as Vs is equal to D Ls into Dis by dt. The reason is because whatever you are applying at the source will be appearing across the inductor isn't it because the load is generally shorted by the thyristor t1 t2 t3 t4 isn't it as a result vs is nothing but this energy that is available across the inductor that is the voltage across the inductor is nothing but vs into ls into dis of dt what is vs vs is nothing but vm sin omega t isn't it so vm sin omega t is equal to ls into dis of t by dt now we can take dt this side so you'll be getting vm sin omega t is equal to into dt so we can write this as multiplying dt this side ls into dis of t now we will be integrating both the sides integration on both sides we get that is integration of vm sin omega t d omega t integration of ls dis of t so carefully observe so this is nothing but dt over here so just make a correction here so if you carefully observe this integration is with respect to dt and this integration is with respect to dis of t that is source current so what is the upper and lower limits for these two terms is what we have to understand so when we are considering with respect to dt that is the duration with respect to time so if you carefully observe the lower and upper limits so we are seeing the voltage that is vs across that is applied to the inductor directly whatever we are supplying is appearing across the inductor during the period of pi plus alpha to pi plus alpha plus mu isn't it that is when overlapping is taking place according to the working we have seen so that is pi plus alpha to pi plus alpha plus mu so the lower limit will be nothing but pi plus alpha and the upper limit will be nothing but pi plus alpha plus mu and in this case very important observation has to be made what is dis of t at these two points that is when at pi plus alpha and pi plus alpha plus mu so at pi plus alpha what is happening till that point t1 and t2 was conducting and the source current over here this is is and this is i out so i out is in the same direction of is so is will be equal to i out isn't it now at this point pi plus alpha plus mu what is happening if you carefully observe T3 and T4 is beginning to conduct meaning to say that the current will be flowing through this path and it flows through this path that is opposite to that of the source current IS 
So IS will be equal to minus I out in this case, isn't it? Minus I out. So the limits is nothing but plus I out to minus I out. This is a very, very important observation. Often it's very challenging to understand how the lower and upper limits are considered. So that is why waveforms and circuit analysis plays a very important role. I hope this point is clear. So once you arrive at this point, from here it is just mathematically substituting and solving these equations. So integration of sine is nothing but minus cos omega t. Again, we have to integrate omega t with respect to t, you will be left out with omega and pi plus alpha to pi plus alpha plus mu. That is equal to ls into again this is integration of dis of t so that is nothing is there means it's one so it's nothing but is of t i out to minus i out now again further simplifying this we will consider the next page further simplifying this we'll be getting vm by omega cos of alpha plus mu minus cos alpha that is substituting upper and lower limits and solving again you will be having cos of a plus b kind of a relationship you have to derive that and you will be arriving at this particular term minus two times ls into i out isn't it subtracting minus i out minus i out will be minus two times i out the lower and upper limits you will be getting cos of alpha plus mu minus cos alpha is equal to minus 2 omega ls i out whole divided by vm taking vm this side and omega the other side so you'll be having this can be rewritten as cos alpha that is rewriting this minus will be positive that's the reason we are doing it cos of alpha plus mu is equal to 2 times omega ls i out by vm so basically we are taking this term this term to the other end or in in general we can say minus is taken common so you'll be arriving at this particular expression so this is nothing but equation number two so we had seen equation number one that is v out reduced i am just rewriting it again v out reduced is nothing but vm by pi into cos alpha minus cos of alpha plus mu isn't it so this was expression number one and this is expression number two. If you carefully observe cos of alpha minus cos of alpha plus mu can be rewritten as two omega ls i out by vm, isn't it? So considering the first expression again, that is what will be v out reduced? V out reduced can be further simplified over here. V out reduced is equal to vm by pi into writing this term that is two times omega ls i out whole divided by vm 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 gets cancelled you will be left out with v out reduced to be equal to 2 times omega ls i out by pi so this is v out reduced so now we have to find out the average output voltage in terms of ls so we know that V out average of with the source inductance can be found out by V out average without LS expression minus V out reduced because we have considered the reduction factor. So subtracting these two, that is without LS expression, we know that 2 Vm by pi cos alpha minus this is nothing but 2 omega LS I out substituting from this term that we have found out. So this is nothing but V out average for a full control rectifier with the effect of source inductance in terms of LS. So this expression is in terms of LS. So there are two average output voltage expressions that is one with a LS and one without LS. So depending upon the type of question they ask, you'll be able to solve this. Now we have to also find the overlap angle. In certain cases, they will ask you to find out what is the overlap angle. So in that case, let us consider this particular expression that is expression number two. We'll be rewriting that again. 
so in order to find the overlap angle that is denoted by mu is nothing but cos alpha minus cos of alpha plus mu that is equal to 2 omega ls i out by vm cos of alpha plus mu is equal to cos alpha minus 2 omega ls i out by vm isn't it just taking this term again and alpha plus mu can be written as cos inverse of this entire term cos alpha minus 2 omega ls i out by vm so what is mu you can take alpha the other side you will be having cos inverse of cos alpha minus 2 omega ls i out by vm minus alpha this is the overlap angle so they will give you the value of ls and all the other terms and ask you to find the value of overlap angle in that case you can directly use this particular formula so this is how you have to do the analysis of a fully controlled rectifier with the effect of source inductance in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below for any feedback please to write the in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you